This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Chapter 3 is about property income and investments for individuals. We're going to look at property income first. So, income from property is the rent that you received, either from a lease or from a tenancy agreement and any premium that you receive on the grant of a short lease. Those are the two main accessible incomes. Now, how is it working? So, prior to 2019-2020, it was computed as if they were letting the property as a business. And it was always the amount, if you look at the words here, rent receivable, expenses payable, and it was on an accruals basis. However, the rules that have been in place for some years now are that it's going to be a simple cash basis. And in the exam question, you should assume that that is what you're going to be tested on, unless it specifically states, and it's unlikely to, but unless it specifically states. Because you can choose an accruals basis should you wish to do so. But um, I think probably a cash basis would be um, the way to go. Now, if you notice the words, it's rent received and expenses paid. Okay. So it's actually what is happening rather than what might happen or what has happened. Okay, It is what is happening. What did you actually get in that tax period? What did you actually pay in that tax period? And we have a, an, an example here that helps us to, to go through this. Um, Jim bought a property and rented it out for the first time on the 1st of July. Now this question covers both advance payments and arrears payments. So the rent of £6,000 a year per annum means a year Latin. Um, alternatively, so we're going to have to do two calculations. One, whether it's quarterly in advance, so you pay at the beginning of the quarter, or quarterly in arrears, you pay at the end of the quarter, will make a difference. He paid allowable expenses of £300 in November for redecoration. Okay, so that's in the tax year. And in 500 pounds in May 24. That is the next tax year. Be careful because that's sometimes the things that we do. Check your dates for completion uh, for work that was done in March. So that was in the, the work was done during the tax year, but he wasn't paid until after. So we've got to calculate the property income assessment and also compute the assessment if. The accruals basis so there are two situations here okay one is a cash basis quarterly in arrears quarterly in advance and one is an accruals basis so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the model answer so because it explains it just as well uh, as i could so cash basis first cash basis has become the default setting so most people will do that if the rental income is received quarterly in advance, then the amount would be received at the beginning of the quarter. So that would be the 1st of July, 1st of October, 1st of January, and the 1st of April. Therefore, that's how much has been received. Okay, so that's the beginning of the quarter. And that's easily the way to remember. In arrears, you're paying at the end. Um, if it's received in arrears, then it would have been at the end of the first quarter, the end of the second quarter, the end of the third quarter. Therefore, only that amount. You see how it makes a difference. So that expense is allowed um, because the other one wasn't paid because we're on a cash basis until the next tax year, as I, I said. So quarterly in advance, it would be 6000 less 300 5,700. That would go in the income tax computation that we looked at in chapter 2 as the income that was received in that tax year. 
However, if it's in arrears, that would be the figure. So this example is perfect because it allows you to see both situations, advance and arrear payments, and what happens when it's a cash basis. Um, absolutely brilliant for that. So that's your perfect example for that. Now, if it's on an accruals basis, so the rent assessable in each case is the rent accrued for the period 1st of July 23 to the 5th of April, irrespective of when the amounts were due to be received or actually received. And expenses incurred in the same period are deductible irrespective of the date they were paid. Okay. So in that period, it was only nine month period of time. So this is nine months. You get a proportion of the annual. That's how you would work it out. Um, so in the cash basis, it's what you actually received on whatever date. This is an annual basis and how many months are we looking at? And both, this is allowed as well, both expenses. So the figure would be um, slightly different. Okay, so let's go back to the chapter. Now we've looked at how the income comes in, and obviously on a cash basis it's when you actually receive it. But there are certain things you can have as um, allowed for deductions from that income. Now, the technical term, the legal term, is that it must be wholly and exclusively. Look at the way wholly has been spelt. Please spell it correctly. It means totally, and it means only. wholly and exclusively in connection with this property income. So you can have insurance, agent fees, management fees, cleaning, gardening. There's a list there you can see. Motor expenses. Now that you'll come across later um, in the employment chapter. This is new. Finance expenses in related to a re um, residential property are not an allowable expense. Section 3, uh, further down in the chapter, um, will tell you get tax relief for it, but it's not a direct expense. So if you see loan interest to buy a property or loan interest to improve a property, then that's not an expense. You have to deal with it separately. Certain areas can cause students some difficulty. Capital expenditure. Property is subject to capital gains tax if and when it is sold and therefore any capital expenditure goes into the capital gains tax computation. So you do get tax relief for it, but not until you sell it and it goes in capital gains computation. So sometimes you have to determine whether an item is of capital nature or whether it is of um, revenue nature because that you can have. Repairs and renewals. Um, if you, if it's obvious, that's fine. If it's not obvious to you, then make an assumption and then write your assumption down. Okay. So repairs are allowed. Improvements are normally classed as capital in nature and therefore you can't have them. Okay. You can have expenditure on property, uh, plant and machinery for the property. Um, cars, you can have capital allowances. Now, these words might not make much sense at the moment because we haven't done the rest of the chapters, but that's an allowance for the, basically for the depreciation of a vehicle or an asset. Um, and we'll come across that when we do self-employed and it will make more sense when you come back and read this again. You can have the cost of the car um, as a capital allowance and then expenses or you can do the approved mileage allowance so if you do anything in your car instead of claiming anything else what you would do is work out how many miles it is to and from wherever you're going anything business wise that you're doing for the property um, and then you would claim 45 pence for the first 10,000 miles and then 25 percent afterwards now if the property is furnished, partly or fully furnished, you don't get relief or an expense for the initial furnishing. So the beds, the cookers, 
the wardrobes, the drawers, anything that you buy and put in initially, don't get any expenses for. Um, only a relief is only available under the replacement furniture relief system. So carpets, curtains, electrical equipment, beds, wardrobes, kitchen equipment, all of that sort of stuff, but only when you are replacing it. Now, if you get cash for the item, so say you had a washing machine and you sold it and you've got some cash, then that comes off the um, re relief that you're allowed. Okay, so the amount of relief is reduced by any proceeds from selling the old asset. Also, you can only have like for like, and it gives you an example here. Um, relief is not given for any cost which represents an improvement. For example, if a fridge is replaced with a fridge freezer, only the cost of the equivalent fridge qualifies for relief. It'll be obvious in the question. Um, it'll tell you quite clearly. You can't have this feature. You can't have it here if it's a furnished holiday lettings, which you'll learn more about later in the chapter. And you can have what's known as pre-trading expenditure. Uh, pre-trading expenditure because obviously you will have um, incurred some expenses prior to letting the property out and therefore you can um, claim those. So let's have a look at example number two. So Sid owns a property. It's furnished. Okay, as you read your questions, you're thinking things as you're going through, reading your questions. Annual rent is £9,600, payable monthly in advance. So we've got the construction of a garage, replacing the carport. We have, let's make sure we've got all the dates first. So look at that, that one is not in this year. Okay, that's in the next tax year next year um, in June uh, insurance for the year from the 1st of July insurance for the previous year was 420 this year it's 480 some drain clearance and a new cooker with an integrated microwave replacing the old cooker sold for 50 pounds this is where we've got this is an improvement because it then tells you the replacement cooker would cost 300 pounds so they're giving you two options here, and you have to choose the correct one uh, to include. Now, the tenant vacated the property during June without having paid the rent. Okay, he did not pay his rent. He was a unable to trace the defaulting tenant, but managed to let from the 1st of July. Okay, so let's have a look at how that would look in the e-model answer. I'm just going to do it up here on this piece of paper here. We've got some gap there. I'm going to do it in there. Okay, so the rent receivable. Or received. Let's do it the proper way. Annual rent. Now, we could do it this way or you could do it individually. There's a whole month where you didn't get any rent. So you just need to make sure that you um, uh, deal with that. So that was the income. Okay, expenses. So we've got the replacement furniture. Okay, and we're going to choose this one and not that one because that's the improvement and they got 50 pounds for it when they sold the first one so the replacement furniture would be show that show what you've done explain what you've done um, so that the examiner can see how you've um, come to that figure 
um, insurance paid. That's what he actually paid because this is a cash basis. Uh, the drainage, the drain clearance. We'll need our drains clearing every so often. Which gives us property income. 23, 24, 7, 6, 90. Little income and expenditure account um, showing all the various different details um, that we have incurred. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to property losses.